What if the deadliest weapon ever made was designed by a 23 year old who kept it a secret for half a century? Meet Richard L. Garvin. In 1951, while most were figuring out their major in university, he was at Los Alamos, quietly building the blueprint for the hydrogen bomb. An explosive, a thousand times more powerful than what hit Hiroshima in 1945. Unlike the atomic bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which use nuclear fission to split atoms, the hydrogen bomb relies on fusion, combining atomic nuclei to release massive energy. The design required precise engineering to achieve a controlled explosion. On November 1st, 1952, at the Inuvita Atoll Pacific Ocean, the IV mic test detonates with a yield of 10.4 megatons, 700 times the power of the Hiroshima bomb. The explosion destroys an island, leaving a mild-wide crater. Garvin's design is the basis for the test success. But Garvin receives no public recognition. His work is classified by the US government and his role remains undisclosed. The project's secrecy restricts any acknowledgement of his contribution. Edward Teller, a senior physicist, is publicly credited as the father of the hydrogen bomb. Teller's theoretical work shaped the project, but Garvin's design solved critical engineering challenges. The public narrative focuses on Teller. That all changed in 1981. In an interview, Edward Teller admits to Garvin's role, stating he was essential to the bomb's success. This statement, recorded decades later, does not reach a wide audience. In the early 2000s, declassified Los Alamos files confirm Garvin's central role in designing the hydrogen bomb. The documents detail his technical contributions, previously hidden by classification. After the bomb's development, Garvin advised US presidents, including Eisenhower, Kennedy and Clinton, on nuclear policy. He advocates for arms control agreements to limit nuclear proliferation, participating in groups like the Pugwash conferences to promote disarmament. From building the H-bomb to advising presidents on how to avoid using it, Garvin's legacy spans both destruction and diplomacy. Once buried in secrecy, his contributions now reshape how we tell the story of the nuclear age.